It's been a while since I've made a video about the T2s and now I have the T1s and um, I thought I'd make a video about these also because many people have made videos about that one but this one uh, has been hardly covered. If I remember correctly I only saw a single other video on YouTube about these IEMs. The inner packaging is reminiscent of the T2s. It's the exact same size, but the T2s had this shinier material. While the T1s right here have this matte finish. Again, not that it matters, it doesn't affect the sound. So we're opening it up, and by the way, this packaging is really nice. I used to, I use it to store all my foam tips, which is the only thing I use, I don't use silicone tips. We'll quickly compare this to the T2's um, manual, or what is this? The T2's are on top and the T1's description is on the bottom. And as you can say, uh, tell, they are way more wordy about the cable in the T2's. Because it's a way nicer cable. And it's detachable via an MMCX connector. Of course, there's other differences as well. This one, the T1 is a single driver unit and the T2s are double driver. They do have kind of a similar finish though. It seems like we get some kind of uh, more special silicone tips, which I'm not gonna use because they're silicone, but they seem more special than what we got with the T2s. So they have this red inner part with the black outer part which seems a bit nicer at least visually than these ones which you get with the T2s. It also seem more flimsy overall. But I could be wrong. Let me take off one of these from the T1s. Yeah, this outer material seems a bit thicker, not to mention this inner red part is a lot stiffer and thicker than the ones you get with the T2. Not that it matters for me again because I don't use silicone tips. These are just fabulous, uh, these foam tips which you get on the T2. They're sticky um, and they kind of behave differently than all the other foam um, tips that I've purchased so far. Um, if I could have uh, one of uh, a pair of these in a smaller shape, then I would definitely buy that instead of all of these others that I bought. These are smaller shape, but they have a little bit of a different material. So the original uh, stock foam tips which you get with the T2 are great. And I'm gonna try to use them on the T1 as well in a minute. You get a kind of um, Velcro tie thingy with both uh, IEMs. This one is for the T2s and this uh, black one is for the T1s. And this is how the earpieces look for the T1. And the filter is kind of a little bit of out of place here. Maybe I can move it back with my nail. Uh, yeah, I get it back in its place, sitting more tightly. And this is how it looks with the T2's foam tips. Of course the cable is attached and um, just rubber which is a huge downgrade compared to the really really nice woven cable 
uh, of the T2s which have barely any microphonics and I assume that um, this cable is gonna have some. Here's a bit of a comparison shot. This is the right side of the T1 and this is the left side as you can tell by the blue color of the T2. But these IEMs have identical looking uh, sides, just mirrored. I think these are actually three buttons, not just visually, but yeah, actually. We'll see uh, whether they uh, change the tracks with these or they increase the volume or whatever. Uh, when I plug it into my phone, I'm pretty sure that the middle button is gonna just play and pause. And the side ones are gonna skip tracks if they set it up sensibly. So, straightening the cable out. Uh, it's plastic, but it isn't the worst plastic ever. It's pretty light and uh, not so sticky. It's kind of matte feeling. It holds its shape. So, Zeos would probably hate it. The split is unadjustable. And here's how the metal part, which does the split, looks. Looks kinda neat. Although, yeah, the cable ruins the look a little bit. There's ports there, of course. Alright, I'll plug it into my ears and tell you my impressions. I have now listened to these and tried them out on my phone. The buttons on the side adjust the volume, so there's that, and the one in the middle plays and pauses in both the stock music app on my phone, uh, which is a Android phone, a Xiaomi Mi Max 2, and also in Spotify. And um, while I was doing that, I've tried inserting these um, earbuds, tips, whatever, in a couple of ways, which I found out uh, were almost all retarded while I was reading up uh, about these IEMs on the internet. I realized how I should actually insert them. And I'm gonna share all of that info with you as well. The first thing I should have done uh, before even purchasing this IEM was, should have been looking up what Cyrnical has to say about it. So, yeah, he's a living microphone. And this is what he had to say about them. Could use some more high frequency response, seems like squandered potential, rank C-. Uh, although, do keep in mind that even with the original uh, T2s, T2s, he only gave them a C plus rank. Neutral, well-balanced tuning and an all-rounder signature that works for most. Um, what I have to add to all of this, the sound department on the T2 and the T1, I did find the T2s to be uh, more resolving and um, less I don't know, subdued sounding, but there's a caveat, sometimes the highs, when I listen to these, uh, can get fatiguing, mm, and I don't think you will ever run into that problem with the T1s, they're much more relaxed. But um, I won't say anything more about the sound, uh, I also found uh, two reviews on these which I'm gonna link in the description, they do a way better job of assessing the sound quality than I ever could, and um, the second review that I found also showed me how to insert these uh, IEMs properly, which can be seen here. And uh, Cernical also did a measurement on them, so I'll link all four of these sites in the description. 
I do want to add some things about the fit, however, which they didn't really mention um, in the reviews or didn't really go into as many details as I will. So, as you can see, the T2s in my right hand have uh, are a lot more straight shaped, which means uh, that you will have no problem uh, inserting them, pushing them inside your ears, um, just straight up, without hooking them over your ears, which is uh, which is something that I really like about them. Uh, because I don't like uh, the reason I'm I'm moving away from full-sized headphones every now and then is because I'm sick of uh, stuff touching the outside of my ear and the outside of my head. And if you wrap the cable around your ear, then it's gonna touch your head and your uh, the outside of your ear. So I'm really glad that the T2s are shaped like this, so I can just plug them straight in without hooking them around. And uh, this uh, this thingy that I put on the cable, on the T2s, uh, keeps them from um, being yanked out from my ear when I move. Because that's the downside of not hooking around your ear. If you don't hook around, then the IEMs can get out of your ear more easily, because they're not held in that much, that securely. However, with these ones, uh, plugging them straight into your ears makes them uncomfortable to wear, at least for me. But there's an upside as well to the way these are shaped. Since they are not that straight, they sit more flat in your ears, you can use them more effectively as uh, bedtime IEMs. So you can fall asleep with them more easily than you could with the T2s. But if you want to go for bedtime IEMs, I would much rather recommend uh, another set, uh, which is uh, the Sony MH750s. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about them or not, but um, Cernical, who is pretty critical, as I've shown you earlier, ranks them pretty high, and he does that. for a reason, because they do sound great. These, uh, he lists the MH755s here, but the 750s that I have here sound just about the same, uh, with just more bass, and they are physically different because they have a longer cable. Uh, the 755s that Cyrnaco lists over there, and the ones which are more popular, have a really short cable because they were originally bundled with uh, Bluetooth um, receivers uh, by Sony. So if you want a bedtime headphone IEM, these are even smaller, lighter, and they the cost on them is pretty low, so you won't be that bothered if you accidentally destroy them in your sleep. So I think I've covered all the things you would want to know about this IEM. By the way, all of these metal parts on this headphone are. If you can hear that, they have a circular pattern and you can scrape them. And parts of your nail are gonna get sanded down. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. So, I think I've covered all that there is to say about them, and if I didn't, then feel free to leave a comment below the video, because I do read every single one, and please also give it a rating, either a like or a dislike, just express your opinion on it that way, and if you want to reach me even faster, feel free to join the Discord server linked in the description, you can write me a DM and I will reply probably faster than I will to your YouTube comment. And subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss my video about putting on aftermarket earpads to bigger sized headphones like the HD68... 68... HD668Bs from Superlux, because 
I was reading the comments below the video I made about that topic, which pads you should put on this headphone and that headphone, the HD 440s, and I found out that many, many people are having difficulties putting on the pads, and I've got a method for that, which includes um, a couple of things. So yeah, if you don't want to miss that, then do subscribe. Goodbye.